Pike Place Market, Shattering Seattle's Social and Economic Barriers. This is one of the greatest days in the history of Seattle, for soon this city will have one of the greatest markets in the world, Thomas Revell. As a solution to Seattle's rising grocery prices caused by an increase in population, Thomas P. Revell, the president of the Seattle Council, proposed creating a public farmer's market in 1907. Ravel's idea to provide Seattle consumers fresh produce without price gouging sellers broke the barriers between the consumers and farmers. As Pike Place developed, it broke social barriers by establishing a positive relationship between the consumers and vendors, and by implementing a cultural hotspot in one of Seattle's central complexes. In the late 1880s, a city fire in Seattle caused widespread destruction burning through most of Seattle's wooden buildings and forcing Seattleites to rebuild their city. Seattle utilized this opportunity to improve its infrastructure and design. The improved infrastructure broke barriers which held Seattle back, allowing Seattle to develop economically. In 1896, gold was discovered in Alaska, beginning the Yukon Gold Rush. Seattle's ferry access to Alaska attracted many hopeful gold miners, eager to obtain gold. The large influx of visitors benefited Seattle's merchants and seafarers, which further strengthened the economy. Washington's fertile land and opening job opportunities helped Seattle produce good crops and attract immigrants, especially the Japanese. Japan's governmental instabilities, social hardships in the mid-19th century, and its proximity to Washington encouraged the Japanese to immigrate to Seattle. The ostracization of one of Japan's corrupt inner council members, Okuma Shigenobu, is an example of the factors that caused Japan's instability. The Japanese immigration, the Yukon Gold Rush, fertile land, job opportunities, and reconstruction of Seattle doubled the population from about 40,000 to around 80,000. This was a dramatic increase, especially in such a short period of time. The doubling in population escalated the demand for produce and goods from nearby farms. Seattle faced new economic barriers, including the difficulty of maintaining adequate prices for groceries. The economy approaching the 20th century was heavily impacted by people's actions. A prominent player of the economy were the middlemen, who were the citizens linking the farmers with the consumers. In this system, the farmers sold their produce to the middlemen, who then sold that produce at a higher price to citizens. The middlemen ended up pocketing most of the profit from the farmers' crops, creating economic barriers for the farmers. The middlemen sold their produce in the Commission District, located in the area between Railroad and Western Avenues. The Commission District maintained sheds full of produce that were sold to dealers with these dealers reselling the produce to more remote neighborhoods of Seattle. This caused the produce to be in poor condition and expensive. From 1906 to 1907, grocery prices rose 4.2%. This created financial barriers for consumers who were having difficulty finding affordable groceries. The farmers only received a small percentage of the money made by the middlemen, leaving them with little or no profit. The Japanese were hit especially hard, as they made up a large portion of farmers in Seattle because they were given low-income, labor-intensive jobs due to racial barriers at the time. The city council members eventually responded to public outcry over the unreasonably high cost of food. They knew they would have to act or face a starving Seattle. The city council agreed to address the problem and proceeded to construct a viable and inexpensive solution. Councilman Ravel discovered that the council authorized the creation of a public market in 1896, which never was created. He gathered the help of the Seattle Times, who wrote persuasive articles supporting Ravel's idea, and he convinced the council to authorize the market. This public market he proposed was a place where farmers could bring their produce in carts to sell directly to the consumers. Ravel's concept broke economic barriers 
by combating the financial abuse of the middlemen. Eventually, with the proposal approved, they passed Ordinance Number 16636, establishing a public farmer's market on the west side of Pike Place, which will be called Pike Place Market. The Council also passed Ordinance 17817, which clarified the specific logistics in running the market so that the market wouldn't have any organizational struggles. The proposal declared that it shall be unlawful for any person to sell or offer for sale in any marketplace established and designated by ordinance any article or thing except fresh fruits, vegetables, berries, and other farm or garden products produced or manufactured by the person selling or offering the same for sale. In August 17, 1907, a few farmer's carts gathered in downtown Seattle. It was a small collection of produce on a newly built plank roadway fronting the Leland Hotel. Upon opening, the market was overrun by consumers eager to purchase the fresh, low-priced produce. The farmers instantly ran out of stock, showing the success of Ravel's idea in shattering economic barriers. Although the market's first day was a clamorous fiasco, it marked the beginning of Pike Place's commitment to break Seattle's economic barriers. Pike Place Market gave the opportunity for many new, smaller businesses that would have struggled otherwise. The construction of more vital businesses like the Outlook Hotel, Triangle Market, the Sanitary Public Market, and the Corner Market finally made Pike Place self-sufficient. By 1909, the market averaged 300,000 visitors per month. The new jobs resulting from the market's growth provided opportunities for immigrants, which increased the diversity of the area. Throughout its development, the market continued to give jobs to immigrants moving to Seattle that were struggling to make a living. In the beginning, the market's workers were mostly Japanese, but between the 1920s and 1930s, the market's population broke more barriers as they branched out to include even more immigrant farmers artists, and eccentrics from other areas of Asia and Europe. The market promoted a sense of community between citizens and farmers, shown specifically when the market was under threat by the Pike Plaza project. Both groups united to vote against the demolition of the market in 1969, showing the strength of the bond between Seattleites and stall owners. John Turnbull, the director of asset management at Pike Place, pointed out that, the market's focus on supporting local independent businesses and one-to-one -one relationships is unique enough to create both a community sense of identity, Seattle's soul, and an attraction for tourists and visitors. The market only exists as it does today due to the people. People like Brooke Westland continually contribute to the success and atmosphere of the market. Brooke Westland is an independent artist working in the market, and we visited her studio to ask about how Pike Place affected her and her community. What is, life, what is life like while working in Pike Place as a small business owner? Um, the market is amazing and I feel like they are breaking barriers as far as just how a business is run um, in Seattle. And the market is run by this preservation historic society. Um, and so basically to get into the market, you have to prove that you are the owner and you are either making or um, going to be involved with your business. And so that kind of goes back to like the meet the producer motto of the market that you can walk in and meet the owner of the shop and maybe see what they're making or creating. Or if it's a restaurant, you know, you get to meet the owners and talk to them. And um, So it's a very kind of connected way of doing business, which is unique, I think. Pike Place Market broke and continues to break Seattle's economic and social barriers in a way that no other landmark can, bringing the people of the Puget Sound together. Pike Place was also a gathering site that attracted a flood of immigrants in Seattle, greatly impacting its cultural atmosphere. The ability to bring farmers and consumers together boosted the failing economy of Seattle at the turn on the 20th century through tourism, fresh produce, and reasonable prices. Pike Place Public Market's greatest influence, however, was building, supporting, and helping Seattle rise as one of the most influential cities in the Pacific Northwest.